Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me for our uh, brand new technique of the month, the cloud pour. I'm so excited about this one. Uh, it's a really fun technique. So uh, we're going to have our cloud pour walkthrough video uh, today. And I'm going to share with you uh, how to do the cloud pour, all of the ingredients you need. Um, I have three different uh, cloud pour formulas that I'm going to go over with you, varying from really easy to a little more complex. Um, so it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I have some paintings to show you as examples, and uh, we're going to do a little demo closer to the end. So we've got a lot to cover, but uh, welcome to uh, welcome uh, to the show. <laughs> so Monique is here. Hey, Monique. Carla. Hey, Carla. Hey, Susan. Uh, thanks for dropping by. Tracy is here. Um, so I'm sure more people will trickle in as we continue. Um, so I'm going to just start out uh, with a little bit of a backstory about the cloud pour in case you don't know. Um, it's pretty common knowledge, I think, but uh, the cloud pour technique uh, was designed or developed, or created, invented by Melly D, who is a really great artist uh, over in Canada. Um, she creates a lot of really awesome paintings. Um, but she started experimenting with the uh, satin enamel from Deco Art a couple years ago, and she came upon um, this amazing technique where if you add a certain amount of uh, Deco Art to your paint mixtures, you get this really interesting cloudy effect uh, when you add it with the other colors and do things like a, a straight pour or a, a ring pour are the, kind of the most common. Uh, commonly used kind of techniques to create the cloud pour as we know it. So, um, so Melly D kind of uh, started it all. And uh, another artist at the time, Elise Fournier, she was experimenting a lot with uh, satin enamels also at that time. And uh, she's also in Canada. So, um, uh, but she's a really great artist too. She does a lot of uh, very interesting paintings now. She's kind of away from the classical paint pouring as we know it. She does a lot of uh, hand painting and very interesting effects with her uh, artwork right now. So, uh, but they're both really great artists. They're, um, go check them out. They're both on YouTube, um, easy to find, and uh, uh, you can learn a lot from them. So um, that's a little bit of, you know, the history of the cloud pour. There have been many other people that have, you know, done cloud pours and experimented. I'm, I don't know if Melly D was the absolute first. It's hard to say, but at least she's the first that I know of. So anyway, so um, that's a little bit of the history um, of the cloud pour. Uh, what was I going to talk about next? Um, but uh, there are many different formulas out there for creating our cloud pour mix. And uh, basically what we're, what I think of the cloud pour as, as far as uh, what I'm going to teach you in uh, this month in our cloud pour series is basically like a really fancy uh, ring pour or a really fancy straight pour where we are um, adding um, a, a different type of a, a paint mixture to our other colors to get this really cool, interesting cloud effect. So it's kind of like a kind of like a more elaborate straight pour slash ring pour. So I'm going to show you how to do it, at least uh, how I do it. And I've gotten some pretty good results with my cloud pours, I think. I really like them. So uh, why don't I go ahead and show you a few examples of some different cloud pours. And uh, uh, I have three of them behind me. The one to my right here is uh, I had this one up on um, YouTube a little bit ago. I did a kind of a new painting on YouTube. And this one turned out really nicely. So this is a uh, 18 by 24 cloud pour. This is using the easy formula, which I'm going to share with you uh, today. So it's a very simple recipe, uh, but you can get some really great results with it. So it's a very cloudy effect and you get lots of cells. Uh, the one right behind me uh, is one of my favorites. And this is using uh, my little more advanced formula. I call it the four part cloud formula because there's four ingredients in it. But uh, you get a really beautiful cloudy effect. It's a very interesting cells. They're, they're similar uh, uh, formulas, just a little bit variation in the ingredients we use. Um, so that one I love behind me. I did a lot of um, custom colors in that one. So I really like that one a lot. And then this one on the left of me, 
Um, it might be a little harder to see this, but that is also a variation of my four-part formula, which I'm going to share with you. And with that formula, you can create uh, colored uh, cloud pour mixes. So it doesn't always have to be white. We can create uh, different colors if you want to. And they can be pretty much any color you want to create the cloudy effect. So you can, we can create uh, custom cloud mixtures. And um, then we add other colors to them. And then that color kind of creates the cloudiness. So most commonly, you see white used as the uh, cloud pour color or off whites. Um, but we can make any color we want, really. Um, and you're always going to get kind of slightly different, um, uh, uh, slightly different um, results <laughs> uh, based on the color you're using in your uh, in this modified like four part formula. So, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, but welcome everyone else who's joined us. Pat is here. Hey, Pat. Um, Lynn is here. Hey, Lynn. Uh, so I'm just kind of talking about uh, the cloud pour a little bit. So, uh, and I'm going over a few different examples. So those are three of them. I'm going to show you a few more now. So I'm going to flip the um, camera to my top camera and show you a couple more cloud pour examples, just so we kind of know what we're in for. All right. So let me flip over here. Let me actually move this and get a painting. Here, I'll grab this one. First, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to flip it over. Oh, I got to probably adjust the camera too. So just one second. It's too zoomed in. OK, just one sec. Here we go. I think that's good. OK, so this is another cloud pour example. Um, and this one is using more of the classic formula, which I call it. It's like uh, I just call it the classic. So um, it uses the actual deco art satin enamels. Um, there are two different types of satin enamels that I like to use. Uh, the deco art is the most well-known one. Um, and so we'll talk about that. But this is kind of a, a, a classic cloud pour using kind of the classic ingredients. Um, and it's a pretty one. I like this one a lot. And uh, let me grab another one. Oh, my gosh. I might have to zoom out again. I'll put this one kind of right on top. This is another one, which is this is also um, the... Uh, four-part formula. So this is the uh, um, kind of my more intermediate formula. And this one turned out nice. It's got a lot of gold in it. And it's more of a monochromatic uh, cloud pour. But I love the amount of cells you can get. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's just, it, and it, it's not very difficult, you know, once you mix the cloud uh, formula. So it does most of the work for you. All you, all you have really have to do is you know, pour it out. And, uh, and it does a lot of amazing things. So it's a really kind of magical, fun technique. So uh, this is, uh, again, the uh, four part formula. And let me move this one aside for a moment. And then here are two small ones I did. I pulled these one out. These are uh, small ones using the um, modified four part formula where you can get uh, colored cloud mixtures. So this one is like a, a very light purple that I had as my cloud mix. And this one I had a red, uh, my pyrrole red as the cloud mix. And I actually have a bigger one of these um, that I just did to show you an, ex, an, ex, uh, an, ex, uh, an example, excuse me, of like a larger um, colored cloud pour mix. It's still wet though, but um, I might pull it in here closer to the end and I'll show you that one. It's a pretty nice painting. So. Um, uh, so this is uh, these are two of the examples. They're like small test paintings that I did of the colored uh, cloud pour mix. And let's see, I have another one here. Um, and Carla is saying, uh, can you use metallic paints? Yes, you can. Um, I just did this one. You know, I'll pull it off the wall here. Um, this one here, it might not all be all the way in there, but I'll hide. Carla's comment. So this one, um, it might be, it dried a little, you know, dark. It was, uh, I use, I didn't use light colors, light values in this one. So it's more of a mid value painting, but the copper here is the cloud mixture I made. So I, you can use metallics. And uh, one cool thing about using metallics is you get this very cool kind of shimmery 
uh, cloudy effect when you use metallics. It can be very subtle or a little more, um, uh, it can be, this one turned out pretty subtle. It looks a little more dramatic when it's wet, but it kind of calms down a little bit. But this was a copper cloud mix and it turned out really, really uh, beautiful, I think. So I'm excited to actually varnish this one because it'll pop all the colors back out. So this one had a, actually had a lot of metallics. It had the copper cloud mix and then a metallic teal, and then it had gold. So there were three different types of metallics in this one. But um, this one I really like a lot. So that one is uh, another example of the colored cloud mix. And I have a couple, let's see here. Let me put this back on the wall quick. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, and now here is another one. This is also uh, one of the uh, colored cloud mixes. This is a black, uh, a black cloud mix. And black is an interesting color because it's, it uh, creates kind of the same similar cells, but it, it, you know, it's black. And so it looks a lot different. Um, and this is a very subtle painting but you can see all of these golden veins when you kind of turn the painting a little bit. Uh, might be kind of difficult to pick up on the camera, but using black or really dark colors creates a very dramatic effect with the uh, cloud pour. So, um, but this is a, a kind of a simple example, uh, which I kind of like. So, but uh, so you can do a lot of different things with a cloud pour mix. And um, I have all kinds of ideas that I want to experiment with. Uh, here is the painting I did just last Friday. This was a simple, uh, our simple little demo that we did using the easy cloud formula. And you can see this one really creates a lot of cells, um, which I really like a lot. And it's a very easy uh, formula to mix. So I'll show you that in a second. So, um, but this is a kind of a fun one. It, was, it turned out really nicely. So let's see here. I'm going to, um, those are some examples. I'll move these off to the side. And uh, I have some more. Um, uh, let me flip back here. I have some more I might show you later on if we have some time. But uh, anyway, so those are some cloud pour examples of what you can do. Um, and you can do a lot of different variations with the cloud pour mix. Um, and I might, one thing I was going to mention. Uh, I'll just mention it now, actually. I'm thinking of not having the Q&A call um, this month because uh, not a lot of people are submitting questions. Maybe I'm doing such a fantastic job that there are no questions. I don't know. But instead of the Q&A call, I was thinking about having uh, another kind of like paint painting night or painting demos and showing some a little more advanced um, variations you can do with the techniques. So. Uh, I was thinking about doing another one like that. Um, so maybe after next week, we'll do a regular uh, kind of painting night live and I'll do some cloud pour paintings. Uh, and then we have our studio chat. And then after that, the following week, I was thinking of doing some more kind of advanced, um, uh, interesting cloud pour variations that we could do. And uh, so one of them is to use the, the spinner and spin out your cloud pours. Um, which can create some amazing uh, paintings. Another one is to do the cloud pour using the waterfall technique, uh, where you're holding your canvas at an angle. Um, that creates a very interesting effect. So um, you can let me know if that sounds like a good idea. You'd want to see some uh, more advanced techniques, or if you want the Q&A instead, we can do that too. So um, let me know. And also, if you have any uh, questions throughout as we're going, um, you can throw them up in the chat and uh, I'll be happy to answer. And let's see here. I have, um, uh, maybe this is Lynn. Hopefully it's Lynn, our Facebook user for this evening. If not, let me know. Uh, she asked, uh, what happens if you use transparent paint? Um, it, you can get some pretty cool results. I haven't done a lot of experiments with strictly like 100% transparent paints. Um, but I'm excited to do that. Not all of them are like super transparent, but you could you could go ahead and mix them in um, and try them. 
you might get some very interesting effects depending on the other colors you're using in your uh, painting. So it all depends, but you can get some very cool effects uh, with transparents. So, um, but it all depends on what color and the other colors in your uh, painting. All right. And okay, so I don't see any other questions at the moment. So let's talk about some uh, paint mixing formula. So I'm gonna flip back here to, um, and I have some handouts for you that I've already posted in the uh, membership area. So here, oops, I'm gonna zoom in again. I had it all set up and then I, I zoomed out. Okay, let me zoom in. Let's see here. Just wanna make sure I'm zooming in enough. There we go. Okay. All right, so. So in the uh, membership right now, I have some handouts for you. There is, um, this one right here is a, where is it? It's just a cloud pour technique kind of overview. And it kind of just talks about the technique a little bit, uh, kind of where you can find it in the success path. Um, and then here are some different uh, notes on my mixing formulas, but I'll get into those uh, in a second. And then I just little notes on paint consistency, some kind of step-by-step -step just to, um, you know, um, just like as a little refresher if you need it and a couple little tips and tricks. So it's just kind of a resource sheet uh, to have handy if you want to and you can print it out and keep it in a binder or something like that. So let's talk about the mixing formulas. And the first one I'm going to start with is our uh, easy cloud formula. And this one is pretty darn easy. And um, I'll talk about the uh, formula in a second, then I'll show you the ingredients. So uh, the Easy Cloud, Easy Cloud Mix is Floetrol and the Bare Satin Enamel Paint and CraftSmart uh, Matte White Paint. And um, I'm sure you could use other uh, whites as well. The CraftSmart Matte works really well for me. I'm sure the CraftSmart like Satin Paint would work well as well, work well also. And uh, I know other people have used the Apple Barrel Matte White and it's worked for them. So uh, the, the, um, the actual formula is uh, right here. It's two parts Floetrol. It's one part of bare satin enamel, one part of the Craft Smart paint, and that's it. Uh, and you don't even have to add water if you're using these uh, ingredients. Um, it's just the right consistency that I like if you just mix these together. I don't need, I don't use, usually add water at all. Uh, you can add water if you wanted to get a thinner uh, mixture, but um, I like it just the way it is. So, uh, and then here are the handy little, it's kind of like a cheat sheet. Uh, if you're using like a, a part size, like a half ounce part size, here are, here's what you need to add and you get the total amount over on the right hand side here. So um, if you need to mix a lot of it, you know, and you could, you, do, you could use a four ounce part size, you end up with 16 ounces of cloud mix. That's a lot. But remember, um, these formulas are just for the actual cloud uh, paint, which is usually just one color in your painting. All the other colors, and I have a note right down here, I use the easy mixing formula to mix all my other colors. So that's just two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and a little bit of water to get to get the paint to the proper consistency, which would be the exact same consistency as your cloud mix right here. And uh, the consistency I like is, I also mentioned it. Uh, where is it? Did I mention it? Um, maybe I didn't mention it. Well, it's, uh, I guess you'd know if you mix this up, but it's just a slight mound when the uh, paint streams off your stir stick back into the cup of paint. So let me flip over here. So that is the easy uh, mixture. Now let's talk about these ingredients and uh, I have them all sitting over here, but Floetrol, we all kind of know what that is. This is just the regular old American Floetrol um, that you can find at Home Depot or other hardware stores, things like that. Uh, so this is kind of a standard item I use in pretty much every paint mixture. Uh, and then we uh, need the satin enamel. And the satin enamel is really the uh, key ingredient that creates this cloudy effect. And 
uh, this one for the longest time, this is kind of the one that everyone used and uh, a lot of people still use it. It's very popular. This is the Deco Art Americana Satin Enamel. And uh, I use this as well. I'll talk about this a little bit more when I get into my third uh, mixing formula. Um, and it works great, but it's a little hard to find now. Um, I just actually saw some at my Michaels and I was like, oh my gosh, I better buy that. So I, I picked up one or two. Um, but it is difficult to find, at least it used to be. Maybe it's getting a little more readily available, which would be great. Um, but it's also a little bit expensive. This is uh, about $10 for this small container. Um, but this is the original that you know everyone started with, that everything that started it all. Um, and it still works great though. But there is an alternative satin enamel that uh, is very popular and is the other satin enamel that I like to use. And it is by Home Depot. It's a Home Depot brand. And it is called Bear uh, Ultra Premium or Premium Plus. It is the paint and primer. And uh, it says right up here at the top, this is an ultra pure white uh, Bear product. And the number is 7050. And I actually have a list, a uh, little PDF of the different ingredients. Um, that uh, I put in, uh, I made an announcement about it, but I'll put it in uh, with the, with all these other handouts for you. So you can print that out. And there are actually links in there too. They go right to this uh, product on Home Depot if you wanna try that and, and buy it from there. But uh, this is what works, it works really well for me. This is what I use in the four part uh, mixing formula. And there's an, an alternative version of this, which I'll talk about um, in a minute. But this is the product I use in the easy formula. So this is the satin enamel uh, for the easy formula. It's it's less, well, it's by quantity, it's less money than the uh, deco art. This is about $14, but it's about, uh, what is this? This is a, a whole quart and this is eight fluid ounces. So it's about four times as much uh, for $14 as the uh, deco art, but it works really well. So this is the ultra white, um, that I use in my easy formula. And uh, then, so this is, these are the two ingredients we have so far, which is the Floetrol, our satin enamel, which makes the cloudy stuff happen. And then we need another white to kind of cut the satin enamel a little bit. It can be kind of overpowering on its own. So we add another white, uh, a white paint to it to kind of tone it back a little bit. And that is where I like to use the uh, Craft Smart um, Matte White. And you can get, this is like a 16 ounce container, but you can get a, the small tubes if you want, or I think they make an eight ounce container as well. It's very affordable, but this works really well and it helps actually create some of the uh, amazing cells in our easy formula. So I'm seeing a lot of activity over here. Um, so I'm just checking to see if uh, uh, I missed anything. Well, I don't think so. Um, Susan just asked about what brands. I think you mentioned that hopefully before, but this is it. So these are the brands. Um, for the easy formula, the Bare uh, Satin Enamel Ultra White works great. The Craft Smart White um, works great. And then uh, the Floetrol. Now, one thing you could do if you wanted to try to modify it, um, well, maybe I'll get to that in a minute. I don't want to overwhelm you with stuff. So, but this is the easy formula. Um, it's, you know, very simple, three ingredients. You don't even need water. And this is mixing our cloud mix, which would be just our white paint that we use with other colors uh, to create our cloudy effect. So that is formula number one. And um, it works great. And if you uh, you're brand new to this technique and you just want to start simple, this is the one I'd recommend trying. Uh, just get one can of the, the satin enamel. Um, Craft Smart White is very affordable. I'm sure you probably have Floetrol. Um, so it's very easy to mix this up and give it a try. So, and then the other paints are just the standard mixture. The easy formula is what I like to use for all these different formulas. So, but that is uh, number one. Let's take a look at number two. So I'm gonna flip back here, let's see. Um, let's see, oh, okay. And uh, 
Oh, here, Tracy, I'm just want to make, I just want to check and see if there's any questions. Oh, uh, Tracy is asking, uh, with Floetrell, is, is there a difference with the orange cap and the white cap? Uh, not at all. Not that I found. I, I've mostly see the white cap now, but I've used the orange cap. I still have the orange cap. It's the same stuff. I think they just switched the colors of the cap. Maybe white's cheaper. I don't know. Uh, it seemed to all happen when everything shut down <laughs> for some reason, but uh, either one is works fine for me. So uh, it's all the same stuff. But that's a good question. And uh, Tracy also says, I have the untinted bear. Uh, does that make a difference? We're going we're gonna to talk about that in a second, uh, Tracy. Uh, you're jumping ahead. But uh, we're going to talk about that in just one sec. So let me flip over here. And I'll show you the, um, okay, so this is the second formula. This is the little more advanced formula. This is the four-part cloud formula. And for this one, um, I have four different ingredients. We still have our Floetrol. We have our bare satin enamel. And you could use the uh, ultra white that we just talked about, or you could use the deep base. And I use the deep base for the colored cloud pores. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then here is another uh, important ingredient, the Vallejo uh, Pearl Medium. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, this is a kind of a, it's kind of a professional grade uh, pouring medium. Um, it's a little bit expensive, but it does some pretty amazing things. Um, and I like using it a lot. And then also we need another type of acrylic paint. And this can vary um, to kind of cut the satin enamel. And you could use a Liquitex Basics, you could use Amsterdam, or you could, this is where you can use different colors uh, to get your, your different colored cloud pour mixes. So, and then water, I usually add water to this to get the right consistency. And that's the just light or slight mound when the paint streams off the stir stick into the cup. So, and then down here I have, um, our little cheat sheet for the different part sizes that you want to use for measuring. And then here's the different amounts you need to add um, of each of the ingredients. And then over here, you get your total um, amount of paint that's all mixed up. So that's a, a simple cheat sheet to help you when you're mixing this stuff up. Um, and you could, I mean, I recommend trying to do this as accurately as possible. Um, and I like to you know, make my paint mixing guides for all of these things. It makes it so much easier um, to mix up your paints. And I'll show you one of those in a second. So that is our second uh, four part cloud. It's actually kind of a two in one because you can make it the white variation or you can make the colored cloud pour. So I'm gonna flip back over here now. So that's uh, number two and that's in the uh, membership for you to print out and use if you want to. So let's take a look at the ingredients. Again, we have our Floetrol standard, and then we have our bare satin enamel again. And you can use either the uh, ultra white if you wanted to make a white uh, cloud pour or cloud mixture, or just like Tracy mentioned before, you could use the deep base. And the deep base, it's kind of a milky white, but it doesn't have any pigment in it really. So when we add different colored uh, acrylic paint, uh, we'll, you know, uh, we'll get a nice uh, colored, you know, colored depending on the paint we're mixing in it. Uh, it might lighten the, the, you know, the mixture a little bit. Uh, when I added my copper, for instance, I created that copper cloud mixture. It did get a little bit lighter uh, than the regular copper just straight out of the tube, but it still dried fairly coppery because when this dries, it'll turn a little more translucent or transparent. And also the other ingredients we're adding, you know, Floetrol is kind of a milky white, but it dries clear. And then also the Vallejo, this is the Vallejo pearlescent uh, pouring medium, uh, the kind of the other ingredient in the four part mixture. Um, this is kind of, it kind of gives a shimmery pearlescent uh, look to your paints, um, but it also dries, you know, relatively, you know, clear. Um, aside from like the, the pearly look. So these are the four ingredients we use for the, uh, and then all paint, of course, uh, for the four part cloud mixture. Now you could use, if you wanted to make a white version of this, 
Um, you could use a, a multiple uh, variation or not a variation, many different whites is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you could go ahead and use the like Artist Loft soft body um, white. Um, I know ever, people have had problems with this kind of being more cloudy in their pores, but for a cloud pour, it actually works pretty good. So you could use um, the Artist Loft flow acrylic white if you wanted to. Uh, you could use um, like the Amsterdam titanium white. You could use a Liquitex white just straight out of the tube. Or, I mean, you could use any other color if you're going after, if you're using the deep base and going for like a colored cloud mixture. Um, and I just use them straight out of the tube. Um, and uh, let's see here. And, um, but, so I got some questions coming in. But these are the ingredients that I found work the best. Um, the Vallejo, I actually uh, learned about this from Tracy Reed. She uses it in her cloud pour. Um, and so I gave it a shot. Um, I, I use a different uh, ratio and formula than she does, but it works pretty well. So I like this a lot. Um, I've tried different pearlescent mediums. Sargent Art makes one. It just doesn't do the same thing. And, um, and Carla, speaking about that, Carla just asked, does the Liquitex Pearl Medium work? And I have not tried the Liquitex Pearl Medium. Um, I probably should, but, uh, but I just, I went ahead and tried the Vallejo and, um, it just worked so well. I just stuck with it, but that's a great question, Carla. And I will try it out to find out, um, to see if it works. I'm not sure. So, all right. So let's see here. And... Oh, Tracy says her her Vallejo is in the middle, but she means uh, male. So, okay, that's awesome, Tracy. And Monique is asking, um, can I use only water to mix the other colors or is Floetrol needed in those paints too? And you know what, Monique, I really have not tested that out. Um, but I know in the Netherlands, you know, Floetrol is probably really expensive. Um, it's so much more affordable here that I just use it for everything, but I have not tried it out. So uh, I can't answer that question, but um, I will give it a shot um, and see if it would work. I think it will, but I don't know for sure. So my gut is telling me yes, but I, I'm, not quite, I'm not positive about that. But that's a great question. So anyway, so any other questions about, um, this is the four part, kind of the intermediate mixture. And again, the, and of course you can print these out and it has all the ingredients and everything. Plus you'll have the um, materials list, but Floetrol, uh, we have our bare um, satin enamel. We have our Vallejo pouring medium and then a paint. So you could use like the white or you could just use um, just like a paint, like a artist loft, or I'd probably use a little bit better paint, maybe Liquitex or um, Amsterdam for your cloud mixture. Um, that might work a little bit better. I usually use like a Liquitex or um, Amsterdam or something like that. But that is kind of the intermediate cloud mixture. And let's move on to the third one. We'll talk about that. And that's, I call it the classic because it's based on the classic ingredients, um, the DecoArt satin enamel. And uh, Susan just made a point to saying for color paints, Liquitex or Amsterdam. I, I like those a lot. You could try other colors. I mean, if you have golden and you want to use that, sure, go ahead. Um, it's a little pricey uh, in my opinion, but you could also use, um, you could try out like uh, Arteza paints. You could use the Artist Loft. I've used that. I, you could try um, the Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. Any of those two paints. Any of the two paints like this will work great. And then we'll need to add a little bit of water to get the proper consistency. And I'll show you that when we get into the demo, the consistency I like. All right, so let me move on here. Oh, here we go, the classic formula. So I'm gonna flip the camera again. So here we go, this is the um, classic cloud formula. This is based on, uh, 
kind of Melly D's classic formula. I just came up with my own, really, but it's using kind of the classic ingredients. So let's take a look at what we got here. And I only really recommend this if you have the satin enamel on hand or if you can get it and you, or if you just want to try it. Um, I wouldn't go out and, and get all of these ingredients just to try this formula. I think the bare uh, satin enamel is a, a much better deal and does pretty much the same thing. And it's easier to find usually. So, but, uh, so first of all, we have our Floetrol again. We've got our DecoArt Americana Satin Enamel. And next up we have our Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. This is the kind of the classic white that is used for uh, the cloud pour in most people's um, formulas. And we have one, one half part of the Liquitex pouring medium. This is also kind of a classic ingredient used in um, uh, the cloud mixes. So, and then down here, and again, I make a note about the uh, same consistency really is the slight mound uh, when the paint streams off the stir stick. And uh, right down here is the kind of cheat sheet part with the different part sizes and then the different amounts needed for each of these ingredients. And then the total you'd get over here. So basically the same thing just uh, for this classic formula. So let me flip back here and uh, let's talk about those ingredients. Again, you know, Floetrol, you know, we've talked about that. And then the satin enamel is the, you know, DecoArt uh, satin enamel that started it all. And uh, if you can find this or you have it and you want to give it a try, um, go right ahead. And uh, it works good. Um, this stuff is uh, great to use. And um, then we cut this with uh, the Artist Loft soft body or Artist Loft flow acrylic is the kind of the classical uh, white to use when we're uh, cutting the satin enamel in half. And uh, so those three, and then finally, uh, Liquitex pouring medium, a small amount of this, uh, and then you mix this into your uh, formula. Not a lot, it's a half, it's a half part size. Um, so it's not a, not a ton of this, um, but it just kind of helps create the uh, cloudy effect I've, I've found. And, um, but the classic formula is very, um, it's very similar to like the four part that we talked about previously. Um, and, but it does give a little bit more uh, kind of cloudy puffiness, I guess, to the clouds using kind of the, the deco art satin enamel um, than the bear. But to me, they look very similar. So I just wanted to give you a formula for, and I've used this a number of times and it works really good uh, for me. I, I like the results of it. Uh, but I wanted to just give you a kind of classical formula using the traditional ingredients, you know, if any of this is traditional or not. So, but those are all available for you uh, in the membership. I'll show you where to find those. If you go to, I'll show you where to find them in a second. But um, so if you have any questions about any of the ingredients, um, throw them up in the chat and... Uh, but I'll show you where to find them really quick here. So I'm gonna, oops, I better log in. But they'll be located in two um, places, but I'll show you the easy way to uh, get to them really quick. I forgot to log in. Just one sec. Okay, here we go. Oops. Nope. All right, let me share my screen quickly. And Okay, and then let me um let me do this down here. Whoa. I've got three things going on. Just a second. Oh, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Okay, so here is uh, the homepage uh, for the membership, acrylicpouringacademy.com. And then if you went and clicked on the pouring studio right up here, it might be kind of hard to see. And uh, over here on the, oops, you might not be able to see 
what I'm doing there. Okay, here we go. So right up here is the pouring studio that'll take you to the homepage of the membership. And right down here, we have the technique of the month. And if you click on that, it kind of has all the techniques that we've been talking about. Here's the cloud pour right here. So if you click on the cloud pour, I, I talk about it just a little bit, but then I, here are the different uh, PDFs that are in here right now. This is the, the technique kind of overview of the cloud pour sheet. And then here are the three cloud pour PDFs. Um, the, which is it? The easy formula, the four part formula, and then the classic formula. So they're all available right there for you to print out and uh, use. And uh, another thing, I let me actually get out of this quickly. So hopefully that show you know tells you where those are. And let me get out of that. Uh, one thing, these these are all in ounces right now, but I will make a, another version with um, milliliters too for our friends that don't live in the U.S. and want the milliliter version. So I will create those uh, and get them in there right away. So you have. Um, you, both the ounces uh, mixing charts and then these milliliters as well. Cool. Okay, so let me get this out of here. And next up, let's talk about um, the color theme for the month. And uh, of course, you know, I like to come up with some kind of a color theme that we can experiment with and try out. And you don't have to follow this, of course, but it's just an idea to get your um, your gears rolling and thinking about color maybe a little differently. So um, let me flip the camera again. But this month, I thought a fun color theme to work on would be analogous colors. And uh, analogous colors are any three colors right next to each other on the color wheel. So let's take a look here at my color wheel. And uh, I'll have to zoom out again. And let's see. And let me uh, zoom out so you can see my color wheel. Oops, that's in. This is out. OK. All right, so here's my color wheel. And I've, I've kind of uh, blocked off the other openings here. So I'm just showing you what an analogous uh, color scheme would look like. So it's any three colors, uh, oops, sorry, any three colors next to each other on the color wheel. So right here, it's blue, violet, or blue, violet, and violet. Anything in this fa color family is analogous colors. And uh, then if we move it over here, let's see, and any three works just fine. So like yellow, green, green, blue, green, that's an analogous color family. If we move it over here, like orange, yellow, orange, and yellow, that's also analogous. And all of these colors work really well together. Um, and so you, you really can't miss uh, when you're using these colors. You're not going to be creating a, a mud or anything like that. These are all harmonious uh, colors to work with. And so if you go over here, we have red, red, orange, and orange. Um, We've got red violets, red, red orange, and they don't have to be exactly, you know, red violet. Anything in these color ranges works fine. So any kind of reddish color works fine. Any kind of violet or reddy, reddish violet color. Um, you don't have to go by like, the, you know, literal names of the colors. So that's what my point was. But like blue greens, like turquoises, aqua greens, any kind of blues work together, work well together. Any kind of blue violets are a beautiful color combination to work with. And uh, so those are analogous colors. And then also remember, uh, with any of these color schemes, you can always add white and black. Uh, and they're like bonus colors. So if you're going to use like a white cloud pour mix, uh, that's an extra color. And you could also darken any of these colors with black if you wanted to go darker. Um, which would be great because it will give you more contrast in your paintings. So uh, just remember, white and black are always available to you, no matter what. So um, the color scheme, let me show you the analogous colors I'm going to work with for the uh, 
um, for the demo, I think I'm going with uh, blue, violet, violet, and like a red violet are the analogous colors. And then I'm going to have white, of course, which is going to be the cloud mixture. And uh, another thing you can do to make this a little more fancy and add another element of complexity, but it's a, a lot of fun to do, is you can kind of, it's what I call kind of a um, an advanced analogous color scheme where, where you, you're adding the complementary color of kind of the center uh, analogous color. So in this case, it would be yellow. So if we have these three different types of violets, um, these are all, you know, violety, blue colors, red colors, um, the complement of the violet is yellow. And this can add an extra bit of excitement to your paintings. And I'm going to be doing that using um, like a goldish copper color. So, but actually maybe this was what I was gonna do, blue, uh, blue, violet, and then violet. That might be it, I don't know. It's pretty close, it's close enough. But then you can always add one of these uh, complementary colors and it creates, it's called a split complementary color palette at that point, but I just call it like a fancy analogous color scheme. So any three colors, plus white, plus black, and then if you want to throw in like an accent color, uh, it works really well. So let's just take a look at a couple of these. Like if we went over to like yellow green, green and blue green, or aqua green or turquoise, and we threw in a little bit of red, um, that would give it a little bit of you know pop, a little bit of a fun accent color. Um, you, there is a chance of creating some mud if we're using red and green right next to each other, but you don't have to. It doesn't have to be literal red. You could use copper would be great to use because um, metallics don't. Uh, kind of muddy things up quite as much as like the straight colors, but uh, that would be another one. So over here, like a really warm color palette would be, you know, red, red, orange, and orange. And then if you threw in a little blue, green, or turquoise, that might be a really fun uh, color palette to, to play around with as like an accent color. So just a, um, just an idea of things to play with if you want to for a color theme for this month. Analogous colors, they're really fun to work with. Um, they always blend together uh, really well. You're never really gonna get any mud. And let me just show you some examples, like this one right here, the red one I showed you from before. This is basically, I wasn't thinking about it when I did it, but this is an, an analogous uh, color scheme. It's got red, it's got um, red violet in it. And it's also got, it's actually, it'd be closer to this one, like a red, red, orange. No, not really. It'd be, it's somewhere in here, um, but I threw in, you know, gold to go along with it. Plus there's a really dark um, uh, dioxazine purple plus black. So it's, kind of, it's, a, it's in this family. It's an analogous color family. And you don't have to be so literal with this. Um, it's just a kind of jumping off point to give you some ideas for picking some colors. And uh, so that's kind of an analogous uh, color uh, palette right there. This is also kind of an analogous one. Um, this one is like a purple. This is closer to something like this. It's uh, I've got violets in here, and I'll, I've also got some turquoise in this one. So it's but they're all fairly close together on the color wheel. So it's a uh, it's very closely related to an analogous color scheme. There's also like a very light color in here. Um, I use it's hard to see it because it kind of got buried, which was a dark titanium white. Um, you can see tiny little hints, but uh, that was kind of a, this is also a fairly analogous color scheme. All right, so let me flip back here. So those are, um, so that's kind of a color idea to play around with if you want to this month. Um, kind of the ones behind me, like the one to my right, that's very analogous, all kinds of greens and blues in this one. And uh, the one behind me is a little different because it's got a lot of different stuff in it. It's all kind of custom mixed together. Um, but analogous ones, analogous colors are great to work with. It's a very safe color palette because um, you're never gonna really get mud unless you're throwing in that split complementary angle we talked about. So 
then, you know, you have to be a little more careful. So, all right. So next up, why don't we do a uh, cloud pour demo and uh, see what happens. So I'm going to move some of these things down here. I've got a lot of uh, stuff. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, and I totally forgot, is if you're going to get the bare satin enamels, um, they're really difficult to use straight out of the cans like this. So um, I recommend getting some squirt bottles, some nice, some good quality ones, and uh, just transferring the paint into these squirt bottles. I have one for, uh, this is my regular white bare satin enamel, and I have one here, which is the deep base satin enamel. It makes it so much more, so much more uh, uh, convenient to uh, squirt the paint out of this than trying to dig into the quartz every time. So um, that's just a little handy tip if you're going to be using the bare uh, satin enamel. So let me move some of this. And let me move this over here. Let's take a look at the colors that uh, I'm going to use. So it, this is a split comp or a split complementary color scheme, kind of like the fancy analogous colors. So I have to flip my camera again and zoom out. So let's see. Sorry all about all the camera maneuvering. Just one second. Where did my mouse go? There we go. Just one sec. Okay. And here's my panel. I better put this up there. Oh. Okay, let me move this back. All right. Okay, so my colors, here is my cloud mixture, which is, you know, can't see it at all, but this is the uh, four-part uh, cloud mixture. And I've got a, a blue, a brilliant blue, a dioxazine purple. Um, this is kind of a, a really warm uh, reddish violet. And then I have this um, kind of gold, and I mixed in some copper, kind of as an accent color. So those are the colors I'll be using for our or demo, and then I have a 12 by 16 panel. This is just one of the uh, one of my panels that I made. I put some tape on the back of it. So that's what we'll be using. And I also need some kind of base coat um, to stick on there, but I'll figure that out in a second. And let's see. Let me, I need to put my gloves on. And I'll show you the uh, consistency for uh, one of the colors. Uh, it's going to be too hard to show you the white. It just doesn't show up on camera. But the other colors are the same consistency. And one thing uh, about the consistency for the cloud mixture, it's not super, super critical like it is for like the Dutch pour, let's say, where it really has to be uh, pretty, pretty dead on or else it's hard to blow around. Uh, you can go a little bit thinner. You can go a little bit thicker with your cloud mixtures. Um, I've tried multiple different uh, consistencies, and they all pretty much work um, as long as they're in kind of the right range, uh, generally the right range. So let me grab a stick here, and let me flip over to um, my other camera, my side camera, to make this easier. And okay, so here we go. Let me adjust one thing. Come on, one more. Okay, so here is uh, the red violet. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. But if, if you lift it up, it just kind of you know streams off your stick and then makes kind of that slight mound in the uh, cup. That's what I like. So something just like about that. And it could be a tiny bit thinner than this. It could be a tiny bit thicker than this. Uh, and it'll still work for you just fine. So 
with the uh, consistency of the most of the cloud pours, just get in the in the ballpark and you'll be good to go. So hopefully you can see that. Um, but that is what I've mixed all my colors to. So and this is the same consistency as uh, the cloud mixture as well. So in the easy formula, if you mix that one up, that's pretty much good to go. You don't have to add any water to it. Um, it's uh, as long as you're you know pretty accurate with your measurements. Um, it's ready to go just the way it is. So, okay, so let me take the covers off of my paints. And we'll talk about uh, how much of the cloud mix to add to your paints. Now, let's see, where's my cup? So I have my cup uh, here, and this is uh, six ounces is what I need for a 12 by 16 panel. And um, so I'll just put that there for the moment. And also, so here is, I'll show you this. Here's one of my cloud mix uh, measuring guides that I created. These are the custom guides I show you how to create in the membership. Um, but this is the one for the uh, four part cloud mix. And you can see right here, the part size is three quarters of an ounce. It, it mixes up uh, three and three and three quarters ounces total, but I have my you know flow trawl line, and then all of the other ones are just one part of each. So I would add my satin enamel, I'd add my um, my Vallejo pouring medium, and then also the other white paint, and then the, the water is extra uh, just to get the proper consistency. But these are so handy to use uh, for you know just marking your cup and then filling it up. Uh, it goes by in no time. It's super fast. So I highly recommend mi making mixing guides for all of your different formulas and stuff. So I'll put that back over here. So let's talk about layering your cup now uh, for cloud pour. And generally, there's, there's two ways to do it. Uh, you can start with your cloud mix first. And doing that is kind of the typical way. And you'll end up most often, not every single time, but most often, if you put your cloud mix in first, you'll end up with a, you know, a beautiful cloudy center to your painting, uh, just like this one. So this was the purple, and I added it first. Uh, but if you don't add it first, if you add it like second to your cup, you add another color first, and then your cloud mix, uh, things change a little bit. And I'm wondering if I let me just one sec. I'll be right. Right back. Shoot. Sorry, I thought I had a a painting close by that had a um, uh, example of not starting with the cloud mix, but uh, I think it's in another room, so I can't show you that, but. Um, Typically, you know, when you're starting out with the cloud mix, you want to start with the cloud mixture first and get one of those really beautiful like centers of your painting. So that's what I'm going to do here. And so here's our white. And you don't want to use a ton uh, as your first layer because it will expand quite a bit. So I like to have just a smallish, a smallish layer first. It's, it's hard to see that, but hopefully you can kind of um, just see I didn't pour a ton in there. And then we can start layering our other colors. And then those you can really decide. It depends. Uh, there's no real um, uh, right way or wrong way to do it. One way I like to do, it, or one thing I like to do a lot, is add my lighter colors or my accent color, like the gold and copper. Because uh, this will kind of blend into the white cloud mix and can be very pretty. And then I might go to my blue. And then I might go to my dark purple. And then last, I'll put in maybe a little bit of the red violet. So, but there is no real uh, right or wrong way to do any of your layering. So any kind of way you want to try it out. And then maybe one more layer of your white. 
And I usually don't make it a really thick layer, um, just a smallish layer. And then you can re repeat your color order if you want, or you can choose something else. Maybe I'll, I'll switch it around. I'll go with the purple next and kind of go backwards. Then maybe go with the blue. And then maybe go with the uh, red or so. And there are the red violet, sorry. And then that's pretty much it. That's, we have our six ounces of paint and in our cup. And I, I generally do like the floating layers like I just did uh, with the cloud mix to kind of keep them separated because I'm basically doing a straight pour or like a ring pour. That's kind of what my thought is. We're just adding the cloud mixture uh, to create the interesting cloud effects. Um, you could experiment with like the high pour if you wanted to. Um, and, and you could even do a high pour with the cloud mix will create much different results. Um, and it'll be different every single time, but it's always fun to experiment with different things. Um, so, but there's, there's really no end to the amount of, uh, interesting things you can do with the cloud mixture. So this is not the end all be all right here. What I'm showing you, there's many more things we can do with it. So I'm going to move this aside for the moment. I should probably move these paintings so I don't wreck them. I'll just stick them down here. And next up, I need to put a base coat on. I always like to put a base coat whenever I'm doing a ring pour or a straight pour. Um, I'm just going to use some of these paints and throw them on here and spread them around. And let me get my, my big knife and do it quick. So the base coat really helps with uh, sliding around your paint puddle. Um, it's not absolutely ne necessary to do it, but I find it, uh, it really helps a lot. And uh, it just makes it easier. At least I think so. And you could do this after, like if you wanted to just pour your, your paint puddle on the, the bare canvas, you could do that and then put a ring around, uh, you know, spread your base coat around that. Like you could also do that. That's a good way to do it. This is just the way I've always kind of done it. That's what I'm used to. So that's pretty good. So let's put my knife down. It's all full of paint. All right. So now let's talk about which uh, side to pour out of. You have two choices. Normally you can uh, pour out of the side you layered in which gives you an interesting result. It's usually uh, like they look great, um, but more often than not now, I pour out of the opposite side of where I layered. I just find it gives a much more interesting design pouring out of the opposite side. Um, so both are totally fine. Both will give you similar, but slightly different results. So um, I'm gonna pour out of the opposite side right over here. So I poured all the paint in over here and I'm going to pour out of this one. So let's see. And let me flip the camera here or show you the other. Let's see. Let me put. I'm going to adjust this camera so you can kind of see the paint puddle when it's coming out. Sorry for the shakiness. There we go. Okay. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to pour just right in the center with a nice even stream. I'm just treating this as a straight pour. Um, so here, let's give it a shot. Now you could you, uh, do this as a ring pour if you wanted to. You could do this as like a ribbon, like a, what do they call that? A wiggle pour where you kind of get that big ribbon. That's an interesting way to do it. All of these will give you slightly different results. But this is just a regular old straight pour with like a thin stream of paint. Kind of right in the center, unwavering pretty much. Here comes the first layer of white, I think.
And then as I kind of get towards the end of the cup, I'm going to just slow it down a little bit. And there's pretty much the end. And I'm going to tilt the cup backwards because I want to catch that drip. There we go. And then pull it away. That was pretty good. So nothing worse than getting a big drip in your paint puddle. Um, I hate that, <laughs> but this is looking nice. So I'm going to flip the camera back and we can check it out from the top. All right. And then, uh, let me just, I'm going to ch quickly check the comments here. And, um, Carla is asking, is this a panel or a canvas? This is a, this is a, one of my panels, Carla. It's a 12 by 16. And we need uh, six ounces of paint for this one. And of course you can find that on the, on the canvas cover cheat sheet. That's in the membership too. All right. So, okay. No other questions at the moment that I see. So my paint's kind of running away from me here um, towards that back edge. So now we're getting interesting things happening. Uh, we, we're getting a cloudy effect already, which is really pretty. So it's time to tilt this out. And I'm just going to go through my tilting process and expand the, the paint puddle. And again, you can, no need to rush with any of this. You can take your time. And I'm going to put it down. I'm going to turn. And that's pretty good. We've expanded our puddle. We'll get some cool cells happening right here. So now we have to uh, pick a corner, any corner to kind of pour off of. I'm right down here. I've got a lot of paint um, right down here. So I'm going to pour off this corner first. So let's give it a shot here. And uh, we're going to lose a few things, but that's OK. And I'm going to tilt it back a little bit. I kind of want to get that cell off of the side there. This one right here. There you go. Okay, now I'll tilt back. But more cells will pop up as we kind of continue. So we've got that first one. Now we can choose another corner. Um, where do I want to go? Since I'm already down here, I think I'll, I'll turn it and go to this corner next. You don't have to do this in any particular order. You can kind of choose uh, whatever your heart desires as far as corners. I love some of those cells, but some of them are going to go away. But some of them, they're going to, I think we're going to get more that pop up. So. so I'm just tilting back and moving the paint back towards the center of the uh, panel or canvas. And uh, all right. Well, I love the center we have. It's a very colorful uh, center to our cloud. So let's go down to this one next. I like that. So I'm gonna, we're going to have a light corner down there, which I think is cool. And again, I'm just tilting, tilting back, moving the paint back, kind of recentering it now. And cool. Let's take a look. Now we have one corner left right here. And I love this big ribbon of the red violet. Maybe we can keep some of that. You never know.
but most of it's going to go. That's all right. I do like that purple though. So I'm just tilt back. Lots of the stuff on the edges, you just can't keep it. It's just going to go away. That's just kind of the uh, nature of the tilting. So I'm liking this a lot. We've got these very cool, um, super compacted uh, lines in there, the uh, layers. I think that looks very, very awesome. So let's take a look now. We've now stretched over the whole canvas and everything's covered. And now we have to just take a look at it, assess what we've got, see if there's anything we want to adjust. I'm quite liking it a lot as it is. Um, we've got a very cloudy center, which I really like. Um, we've got that kind of coppery gold, like hinting around um, in some of the clouds. I got to wipe my hands off before I point at anything. But, um, but we've got like all the coppery gold is kind of um, just accented throughout the cloud mixture, which I really love. And it's a very colorful painting actually. Um, it's using just our four colors. And we got this really colorful center, which is really cool. So I don't know if I want to adjust anything else. I think it looks pretty great just the way it is. Um, let's see. And then th that's totally, you know, this stage, the last stage of tilting is completely dependent on your personal preferences, what's happening with the painting. Um, I'm really liking it. I don't think I want to mess with it. So you've got four kind of unique uh, corners. These two are rather similar. If anything, we could uh, tilt a little bit of this off, maybe. But I don't even, I don't even think it's, it's worth messing with. I think I like it just the way it is. It's a very cloudy painting. I love it. And we got this really cool band um, over here, which I really think is awesome. So I'm going to keep it. So I think it turned out really cool. That's a, I mean, that's a very, it's a very simple technique, really. Um, and we've used our cloud mixture twice in our cup. And we didn't use a whole lot of it either. We added it first and then one other small layer. And then just the rest of our colors with a straight pour. And, and that's it. And then the paint does all the rest. And uh, that's what I think is so cool about the cloud mix. Uh, and the cloud pours, paint pretty much does the, the whole job for you. We, I love all these cells we got. I mean, we've got tons of cells and it looks really, really cool. So some of them might continue to evolve and develop a little bit over time, but usually the stretching is and tilting is what brings them up. So once we stop the tilting and stretching, you kind of lock them in place and they're pretty much, you know, that's what you're going to get. So, but I think we got a really cool demo. I'm happy with it. And uh, so let me flip over here and um, check the comments. Um, it turned out nice. I like it. It's a very colorful painting. Um, that's probably the most colorful one I've done in a while. So it turned out really cool. So let me just check. Uh, any comments? And Donna just said or asked, uh, will more clouds appear while it's drying? Uh, some of them might, um, but it, they're not going to be huge clouds. Usually, you know, the tilting, like I just mentioned, tilting and stretching the paint is what kind of brings them up. Um, but we might still get a few, you know, some might pop up uh, here and there. But, uh, but now that we're done, I think it's mostly going to stay the same. So, <laughs> Monique says it reminds her of the Care Bears. That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Which is, which is your favorite Care Bear? 
I can't remember any of them. So I used to watch the Gummy Bear show, though. I loved that cartoon when I came home from school. Uh, and uh, Donna is also asking, um, the other pour you showed us with similar colors, the cloud was blue. What did you do different um, that this is white and that one was blue? Uh, the difference is uh, the cloud mixture I created. So this painting, I used the white cloud mixture. So this is the four part cloud mix with the, um, the ultra white bare satin enamel. And then the white I used was, uh, what was it? Oh, it was, I used the uh, artist loft white um, for, my, for my white. Now the other one was a blue, it was like, a, like this one, let's see, where did it go? I think you're referring to uh, this one. This one had a blue or a violet cloud pour or a cloud mixture. So I used the bare satin enamel deep base for that one. So that's more of like a trans, it's kind of like a milky white translucent base. So I used the bare um, deep base and uh, it was a, let me show you this color right here. The um, light blue violet is the color I used uh, in that instead of white, I used light blue violet to create the, the violet uh, color. So it's the same exact mixture. Uh, we just used the different bare products. Um, so here is the, uh, you can't even see the words, but I'll just hold my bottles. So here is the deep base. And this is what I mixed with the, um, the violet, the, like the light violet. And the other one is the uh, ultra white. And I used I mixed this one with the uh, Artist Loft White. So we have just two different colors of a uh, cloud mix. And then in general, I only use one color of cloud mix in a painting. So either the white or the purple, and that's your cloud mixture. Um, one thing I'm gonna experiment with is doing cloud pours using multiple uh, colors of cloud mixture. So like for instance, you could, you could try a white cloud mix, and then also have a black cloud mix in the same painting and see what happens. I'm not quite sure. Um, they'll either create tons of clouds, or maybe they'll like uh, work against each other and kind of nullify each other. I'm not sure. But uh, that's another experiment uh, for another day. So we can maybe play around with that another time. But that's a good question. So it's, um, you know, normally, you know, you see a lot of white cloud mixes. That's what we just did is a white cloud mix but you can also do the colored cloud mixes too. So a lot of, lots of different choices to make. All right. And uh, thanks for all the great comments, by the way, everyone. I'm so happy you're finding this uh, useful and interesting. And Diane says, uh, choosing colors is hard, uh, like for when you're tilting. Um, yeah, I just, just choose one. Nothing is going to make or break the painting, really. So just pick one and go for it. <laughs> so that's what I do. Oh, my gosh. And, um, and Diane asks, uh, is this the normal speed of the flow? Um, like when you're pouring the uh, paint out? Um, yeah, that's pretty much the normal speed. Now, I'm pouring it rather slowly. Uh, you could pour it faster um, if it, when it's coming out of the cup, right? Um, you could pour it faster like and get a big ribbon and do like a wiggle pour or like a ring pour. Um, I choose to do it rather slowly, so it takes a little longer, but um, that's the consistency also. So if you have thinner paints, uh, it's going to come out quicker, but you're going to get a different res result. So um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You could try thinner mix as well. Um, again, you have uh, flexibility with the paint consistency. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Donna says she's running out of room for paints. Yeah, me too. I need a bigger room. Oh my gosh. And uh, 
So Pat is saying like, she'd like to see multiple colored clouds. Yeah, that would be fun, right? To see if we could get uh, multiple uh, cloud mixtures in one painting to see what happens. I can see a, I can see doing that. Um, an another way to do it would be a bigger canvas and you do a multiple ring pours or multiple straight pours on one canvas using different colors of cloud mix. That could be incredible. So, I mean, there's no, um, no end to the, the possibilities with the, with the cloud pour. So, okay. <laughs> Monique says Care Bear, like Care Bear, Bear Paint. That's great. That's our new, that's going to be our uh, mascot is our Care Bear. Awesome. Thanks, Monique. Oh, my God. Um, and Carla's saying uh, all of the paints are the same consistency. Yes. Yeah, all of the paints are the same uh, consistency. So that slight mound when it runs off the, the stir stick into the uh, cup of paint. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Um, so, I'm just scrolling back up here. If there are any other questions, um, throw them in there and I'll be happy to answer them. And thanks again for all the great comments, everyone. Um, this is a fun one. And let's see, no, I don't see anything else at the moment. So I think, I think we're good. I think, um, we covered a lot. So, uh, we talked about the different ingredients. Uh, there's going to be that uh, materials list in the membership with the other uh, PDF printouts. Talked about three different recipes you can use. Actually, four, counting like the colored variation of the four-part cloud mix. So you can make white ones, you can make colored ones. So that's four different uh, formulas. I hope I'm not giving you too much, but <laughs> pick one out. I, I, I suggest starting with the easy uh, formula and go from there and see how that works for you. And you can always get more uh, uh, in depth and add different materials and products as you go along. So, um, but thanks so much, everybody. Um, I love the demo we did. I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, I will see you again soon. Um, I'll post this in the uh, Facebook group too, when it dries and so you can take a look at it. So uh, take care everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, Happy New Year again. Um, it's gonna be a fun year, I think. I'm excited about it. So take care. I'll see you uh, next time and I'll talk again.